Welcome into Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here. Right now we are talking about suspensions being levied by the league against some of the Jaguars AFC South division rivals. We'll get into it right now, but first like to remind you, please, if you enjoy the content, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave a comment in the comment section below on YouTube. Really helps the algorithm out. But if you want to support the channel even further, you can check out genjag.com slash shop. Pick up some new Duval gear. We've got a pre-order for our Jacksonville football shirt that was just released earlier this week. You can go check it out, genjag.com slash shop. Getting into these suspensions, right? The Colts. They have Isaiah Rogers, who was suspended by the league, and they have Rashad Berry suspended by the league. The Colts went ahead and decided to waive both of those players. So they are no longer members of the Indianapolis Colts after some uh, some hefty, hefty suspensions that the league laid down on them for some some gambling that was not just on on things outside of the NFL. Like it looks like Isaiah Rogers was even betting on props within the Colts organization. I'm not here to pass judgment on that stuff. I just want to talk ball. So when you talk about losing Isaiah Rogers and Rashad Berry, Berry not as big of an impact, right? But losing Isaiah Rogers, he was going to be a starting outside corner for the Colts in 2023. One of the better young corners and return men in the league. He was really starting to develop in 2022, took a big step forward, had a nice season for them, really athletic, really talented young kid. He's going to be out indefinitely, suspended by the league. The Colts won't have his services now or in the future unless they decide to bring him back down the road. Find that extremely unlikely. But what does that mean for the Colts and the Jaguars? The Jags play the Colts twice in the first six weeks of this season. So that means you're going to see young players having to step up for the Colts unless they decide to make some roster moves here, fortify their secondary further. They do have Kenny Moore, who they really like, who's more of a nickel. Uh, Rodney Thomas and Julian Blackman can both play. Nick Cross at safety. But when you talk about outside corner, Julius Brents and Darius Rush are going to have to step up and be able to contribute from day one now. I like both of these players. Julius Brents coming out of Kansas State, Darius Rush, South Carolina, both performed well at the Senior Bowl. Both have a ton of talent, a lot of length and athleticism within their frames. I think they're good fits for Gus Bradley's defense, but they're going to have to come out in week one and contend with Trevor Lawrence, Calvin Ridley, Doug Peterson calling the plays in this Jacksonville Jaguars offense, and then again do it in week six. Um, Not great for them, but could help the Jaguars out when it comes to exploiting a young secondary and look you feel for these guys obviously they made mistakes but these young players Darius Rush Julius Prince they're gonna have to step up for the Indianapolis Colts we'll see how that plays out in 2023 this doesn't feel like a year for the Colts in which that they they really need to make the playoffs or contend for the playoffs really they'll be happy as long as they get some positive tape from rookie Anthony Richardson, quite frankly. I think that's the biggest thing the Colts are looking for. They do have talent throughout the rest of their roster, so this is a team that should be competitive. Obviously, losing Isaiah Rodgers, not going to help in that department. But you get to see Julius Brents and Darius Rush very early on. Now, when you look at the Tennessee Titans, Nicholas petit Frere, their starting right tackle, he's been suspended for the first six games of the season. That won't impact the Jaguars and the Titans' matchups this year. They play later on down the road during the season. But it will impact the Titans over the first six weeks of the season, and they play teams like the Chargers, the Bengals, the Ravens. It's not going to be easy sledding for the Titans early on, and this is a team that their goal is absolutely to make the playoffs, right? They're running it back with Ryan Tannehill, with Derrick Henry. They obviously have Traylon Burks, a couple other receivers they like that are young, developing type guys. Chigo Conquo played well down the stretch for them, a young tight end out of Maryland. A super tough, physical, smart defense that has talent at all three levels, is well coached by Mike Vrabel. The Titans are going to be trying to compete for the division, trying to get into the playoffs once again after missing in 2022, falling just short to the Jaguars in Week 18 in that AFC South Divisional Championship But what does it mean for them early on? They will be without their starting right tackle, Nicholas Petit-Frere. 
Jalen Duncan perhaps going to have to step in and play from day one, a rookie out of Maryland who played left tackle for the Maryland Terrapins, a super physically gifted and athletic tackle, but a guy who really struggles with some of the finer points of technique at the position. You pop on the tape, you see him getting beat consistently week in and week out. You do see high level reps, but he's going to have a race to maturity if he's going to start at right tackle early on for the Titans and have any sort of success. Um, obviously they drafted Peter Skaronsky in the first round. They have him probably going to start at left guard, but could that change now with Nicholas Petit Frere getting suspended? Could, could Peter Skaronsky who played left tackle for the Northwestern Wildcats switch over to the right side and man that side to start the season? We'll see how it all plays out. Either way though, the Titans are going to be having to do some musical chairs and they will be without one of their top five starting offensive linemen in NPF to start the season for the first six games. So if you're a Jaguars fan, obviously you feel kind of good about this. It's not hurting your chances of of competing to win the AFC South again, of being able to take down the Colts in week one and week six. You play them early on in the year, both games. We'll see how it all plays out. You see the NFL cracking down on gambling, betting on your own team if you're Isaiah Rodgers obviously makes no sense something you knew you shouldn't be doing. We saw Calvin Ridley get suspended for an entire season in 2022. He's back with the Jaguars now. Hopefully the Jags are able to avoid any of these types of suspensions moving forward, and hopefully just players get smarter as a whole and just stop doing it. Like Nicholas petit Frere, he wasn't suspended for betting on the NFL. He claims steadfastly that he was not betting on the NFL, that he was betting on some other sport. So it is what it is for these guys. Obviously for the Titans missing MPF for six weeks, not as big as it is for the Colts losing Isaiah Rogers indefinitely and deciding to go ahead and waive him, remove him as a member of the Colts roster. We'll see how it all plays out for the Jacksonville Jaguars, for their AFC South Division rivals. Jaguars obviously have their own suspension they're dealing with with Cam Robinson to start the regular season. Not sure how long that's going to be. He got suspended for performance-enhancing drugs. NFL still has not confirmed how long he will be out. But thank you so much for tuning in here today. Again, if you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and check out ginjag.com shop. Pick up some new Duval gear. Have a good one, Duval.